Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security of the game. Ah, you must be Mr. Whitmer. Madam Carlyle has asked me to be of assistance to you. I trust you've had a good look around. Are you ready to see the crime scene now? I am. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Hello there, sir. I feel obliged to point out the current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear hey. with them if they seem affected you? by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. 
However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for new Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Asset transfer is from the Carlisle account, HTC Depot number 5085. Uh, no, I need it immediately. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. It doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Right. I'll double check and get back. I did, sir. It all checked out. So, how long have you been working here? 
About a month now. You're American. What on earth are you doing in this shithole? A girl like you belongs in clubs in London. I bet you're a great dancer. I don't like dancing. What about restaurants, then? You like food? I know some great places. That's a good I should opinion. take you back yeah. really. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Madame Carla's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. There's no family without secrets, 47. But this family seemed to outdo most. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? dead body and was all shook up. I tried to tell Emma, and do you know what she said? She said, things will change around here. I can promise you that. And her son Patrick is just as bad. Just look at Rosie. He has no respect. Praying on the girls like that. Comfort her or not, should I ask her to marry me? Well, she says no. And then this big funeral thing tomorrow. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. 
But now he just ignores her. Well, he, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. I except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect it, right? How do you even do that? I can't do that. You'll be fine, Robbie. Kids are great. I shouldn't gossip. But that end woman is terribly big. What is it? That music makes my heart sore. Quite the poet. But you're right. It's beautiful. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by a mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. Uh, you should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Th did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning, or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy. And Mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Yes, hi, Cassie. It's me again. Edward. I, I know I'm not supposed to leave you messages, and this is the last time, I promise. It's just, uh, I don't know how to handle this whole situation. I don't think I can really. I, I can't feel my legs, and my eyes are not working properly. This flicker thing again. Y you can't tell anyone. But, but the thing is, I've been asked to perform the eulogy at the funeral event tomorrow. I know it all sounds so unbelievable. But even though Mother is still alive, we still have to go through with the funeral. I have to write the eulogy. I don't think I can. She will definitely want to read it, and no matter what. I, I just know she'll be disappointed in me. Again. My legs are really weird. I, I need you, Cassie. I'm sorry, I know. I'll hang up. Not supposed to do this. Christ, sorry. Bye. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. 
On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle, but who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Uh, 
Patrick token to Madame Carlyle's door. Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Oh, of course. tough sometimes. Alexa, back from the dead. A make-believe funeral, a murder mystery. Oh, it's all too much. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will settle down soon. Feel the hair on my neck stand. You and me both. Excuse me, you really can't be here. What the hell? Ugh.
These are extraordinary times at Thornbridge Manor. Whew, no need to go to the gym after a day like this. I don't believe for a second that Zachary committed suicide. We'd only just run through his plan for the spring seedlings yesterday. Yes, sure. But he, he was upset believing his sister was dead. I'd say worried about how things would be handled. Gregory and Emma taking over. I said they let him stay here, but Ethel was sure Emma would throw him out. Emma Carlyle in the greenhouse. How curious. about Zachary. He spent most of his life in here with these plants. Not much of a life, is it? Well, anyway, I'll be outside if you need me. If you'd excuse me. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. fucked up, didn't you? Staging your own death? A major, grandiose cock-up, I'd say. Be quiet, Gregory. It shows you're only human, after all. I never would have guessed. That is Alexa Carlyle, unofficial leader of the Provenance Partners, and last one to be alive. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I bet Mother spent the last I week Zachary at her Cypress estate. I know. Am I I'm right? A, I'm not at liberty to say. Or perhaps Mr. Oh, Fernsby. I don't I like. I need to know what's going on. He could have done it. This affects me too, you know.
That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards. It's really done, I guess. Over. Never can I ever disappoint you again, Buffalo. Maybe I should write the speech and say that. Yep, I'm awesome. That's a token for a vault in the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. I'm just A-OK. -okay. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But why is safe with Ethel? She never misses a step. Gossiping and work both. Fight for you tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh God, it's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect it, right? How do you even do that? I can't do that. Amy is a what? Hey, somebody want to help us out over here? No, no. I'm... <laughs>
fine if you want them. You must have been in some incredibly dangerous situations, right? Shootouts and hostage negotiations. Like <laughs> me. <laughs> 